In this segment, we're going to be doing the thoracic pump technique, which is sometimes called the thoracic lymphatic pump, and we're doing uh, the thoracic pump as originally described by Dr. Miller, so this would be the classic Miller thoracic pump positioning and style. So in this technique, the patient will lie supine, flex the hips and knees so that you have relaxation of the abdominal musculature to let this vibratory effect that we're going to do take place. We're going to have the patient turn their head to one side or the other, which is the most comfortable position for them, because as you do that, there's going to be an airflow movement through the patient. So if the patient happens to have pneumonia, bronchitis, some pulmonary condition where you don't want their breath being forced upon you, uh, you want to have their head turn one way or the other. So you may even want a mask on, depending on the patient, if it's a hospital patient, et cetera. So head's turned away. And what I'm going to do is take my hands and find the clavicles. In a male patient, you can put your hands directly across the patient all the way down and compressing the fingers onto the chest. In a female patient, uh, you have some options. The one we prefer is to cross the hands over the sternum like so. Some people will actually come out here on the outside of the clavicle. I find that uh, for the patients pretty uncomfortable. So we just get the whole hand crossed over in this female patient. My elbows are straight. I have a slight lean into my body. I ask the patient to take a deep breath through her mouth, and she exhales, and I feel where that exhalation limitation goes, and I might have her do that just a couple of times just to get started. And on the next exhalation, I ask her to breathe normally as she needs to, and I'm going to put a slight compressive force in a two per second, one, two, one, two, one, two, something of that nature. Uh, and if the patient feels she needs to breathe, she'll just breathe as I do this. And if I can feel the ribs sort of pulling up as if they want to go into an inhalation, I lighten up my pressure to let her take a breath without too much restriction. Typically, we, do, we tend to teach this to do this to the patient for one to two minutes. Dr. Miller evidently uh, would do this up to 15 minutes in his patients, and then he even developed a machine to strap them in to do this. We've tried this on the patients in the clinic, and we've actually, with two to three students, Switching off every two minutes, we've gotten up to 12 minutes with no problem. So, Miller's thoracic pump. Now, this can be varied so that you just have the patient take a deep breath, let it out, squeeze out some of the air, squeeze out some of the air. Okay, another deep breath, and let it come in, and then exhale, slowly exhale, 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 and keep forcing it out. So, as I force this exhalation, uh, patients who have emphysema, things like that, where uh, the typical thoracic pump might be causing a lot of aeration. Uh, you don't want them to expand any more than they already are if they're emphysematous. So you want to do these uh, exhalation-oriented techniques. But the classic pump is that alternating one, two, one, two. We will show uh, some other variations of these where you can uh, go to the side of the patient, and we'll show that in another clip. 